Uh, good morning. Uh, so we continue the lesson uh, today. We I would just want to talk about the radians, which actually is very important to know about them. This is it's not very deep, of course. It is just another uh, unit, another unit for measuring the angle. Yes. For example, if you have the length, you have different units for measuring the length. You can call meter one unit of length, or I don't know. Uh, foot or yard and other actually units for measuring the length but what is important is that of course uh, for example in the United States probably they are measuring length in feet and then you know if they say for example five feet if this is not very tangible for you you have the conversion rule so that you can convert it to meters and try to see how is that that's that's the same story here so we have one fo very famous uh, unit for measuring the size of an angle which is a degree and then we want to introduce another one which is mainly very important in our lesson most of the time I will stick to radians from now on and when we move to the other chapter that we are studying derivatives uh, almost all the time we are working in radians okay in this chapter we will be a little bit flex flexible uh, and that's a little bit, but to be honest, harder because then you have to think both in degrees and sometimes in radians. But when we go to the next chapter, always we are working in radians. It's less confusing. Okay, so to, to let me just uh, start with defining what do I mean by a degree. So what is a degree? So if I say that why my angle is one degree, what do I mean? It means something like this. So for example, if you have a circle and then you start chopping this circle, so it's partitioning this circle into 360, sorry, uh, yes, 360 equal pieces. I'm exaggerating this a, li a little bit, but assume that you are able to do it with equal uh, sizes, and then take two consecutive of points, yes, two consecutive points, and connect it to the center of that circle that you have chosen then you immediately realize there will be an angle here, a central angle. By definition, the size of an this angle is one degree. That's the, if you want to get an idea of what a degree is. Okay. So in this case, if I ask you how many degrees are in one circle, yes, 360 and that is not the reason is just by definition so when I wanted to find a degree I myself told you divide it into 360 equal pieces and one piece is called one degree so then it becomes evident that how many of these one degrees I can fit into one circle one full circle by definition 360 degrees yes I actually don't know might be because of historical reasons I really don't know exactly. You can go and Google up uh, actually the history. Why? Because uh, there is also another one which is called grad, I think, or grad, and they divide it to, to 400 pieces. And each one of them is called a grad. But of course, this is obsolete more or less. The units that we are using are either radians or degrees. Okay? Yeah, but that's a good uh, story. I just came to my mind and you asked that. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Uh, might be it has something to do I mean but that's also 365 days yes I don't know let us see how it works if you google it around that would be good okay so now to define a radian the definition is a little bit more subtle here so I take the same circle for example but what I need to do for finding the to define a radian I would say that this circle has some particular length for its radius. So let us assume that the radius is our unit of length. And then what you do, for example, assume that you have a piece of a string or thread so that you just cut the string so that the size of that string in your hand, when it is kept stretched, is exactly equal to the size of the radius of that circle. And then you take that a uh, a string with you and then attach one end of it in some point of the circle and try to bend that string in a way 
that it overlaps completely with that part of the circle and then that string of course will end at some point yes so it is clear that this length from this point directly to this point is shorter than this one because some part of it is bent okay so if i ask you what is this r you say that i take this r and then this arc this is called by the way an arc this arc has length equal to r so it means that if i take that uh, string and uh, stretch it and then measure the size the size is r units of length yes now if i take these two endpoints and connect it to the center i get an angle there this angle is called one radian rad is the abbreviation for radian so in degrees it is easier to write you just put a hollow circle on top but here you have one radian you have to write it down okay so intuitively you feel that one radian is much bigger than one degree yes okay i want to answer the question i want to find the conversion formula so that if i give you an angle in radians you should be able to express it in degrees and vice versa. To answer that, convert to find that conversion formula, I will ask you the same question. Here I ask you how many degrees you can fit into one full circle. You to immediately told me 360, 360 of them. Now I ask you the same question here. So how much, how many of these one radians I can fit into one full circle? Yes, Abdul Manan? No. Two? You said two? Uh, no, but I think even I did my picture is very poor. But you see that this is two. Still, there are some more space that I can fit in. Yes, Robert? So how did you come to that conclusion? Circumference. Yes. I agree, I agree. So what is, what is the idea? If I ask you how many of these whiteboard pens I can fit into this length of my desk, you would say that, okay, if you tell me the length of this desk and if you give me the length of this pen, I divide the length of the table by that. Whatever it is, this means that that number of whiteboard pens I can fit exactly into this one. So that's also the same story here. If I give you how many of these arcs you can fit in into the full circle, you will ask me, okay, you will tell me that first I need to find the total length of the whole arc, which is the full circle, and then you have a formula from even Grund School on. So the formula is 2 pi times r. So that, is the, that is the length of the full arc, the full circle. But by definition of the radian, the length of this arc subtended by ra one radian, okay, is how much? What is that? What is the length of one of them? R. So the full length is 2 pi r. The length of this one is r. You want to see how many of these you can fit into this. So you take that big number and then divide it by r. Yes? But then this r and that r are cancelled, and then what you get is the answer actually Robert told us, so that's 2 pi. So you need to remember, in one full circle, there are 360 degrees. In one full circle, there are 2 pi radians. Okay? And that is extremely important. This pi is the famous number pi, yes, which is an irrational number. So 3.1415. And of course, it will continue forever because mathematicians prove have proven that uh, this is an irrational number. Okay, so this is clear. Now we understand that 360 degrees is one full circle. 2 pi radian is also one full circle. So these two quantities should be exactly the same. Yes? And that is the conversion f uh, formula that you need. But of course, we can simplify this a little bit. 
For example, I, let us divide by 2, 180 degrees becomes pi radian. By the way, be careful, this is a little bit source of confusion for students. People think that pi is 180, okay, because of that. That is wrong. Pi is always that number, 3.14, whatever. But this means that 100 of 1 degree is equal to pi of 1 radian, pi times 1 radian. So don't think that pi is 180. Pi radians is 180 degrees. Okay, but usually this is not a good f uh, conversion factor, so I would say that, okay, what is, how much is one degree? So one degree is 180 degrees divided by 180. But 180 degrees is pi radian, and then you have to divide it by 180. So that is your conversion factor. So one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. Yes? Or let us write it the other way around. Let us this time divide by pi. Yes? So I would say that 180 degrees divided by pi is equal to 1 radian. Yes, so that's also good to know. So 1 radian is equal to 180 degrees divided by pi. Now let me ask you this question again. If I ask you, okay, how much approximately is one radian what do you do you take your calculator what do you do it's good to by the way do it for me now because i want to write the number here so you have to take 180 and then divide it by pi pi is that famous number don't get confused yes it becomes 57 or something yes so approximately 57.3 degrees and so it means that your impression was quite right, yes? So one degree is much bigger unit, yes? It is nearly 57 times larger than one degree. Okay, so let me give you a very simple example. I mean, this is a good rule of thumb, but don't get confused. My, I myself use it a lot, so I would say pi is 180 in a sloppy language, but pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So, example. Uh, so convert to radians. So number one, for example, I would say 30 degrees. I want to say uh, th 30 degrees, we have a good feeling of what 30 degrees is. We want to see how many radians is 30 degrees. Of course, uh, it is very simple. So if uh, let me just write the details, like if you are doing something like physics. So 30 degrees is 30 times 1 degree. That's the meaning of 30 degrees. But what is 1 degree? 1 degree is pi over a one 180 uh, radian. So this means 30 times, instead of 1 degree, I put what? Pi over 180, but radians. And then you can simplify, because now these are pure numbers. You see, this is not a pure number. What do I mean by that? Real numbers in mathematics doesn't have any dimensions attached to them. Yes? I can talk about 5, but when I want to talk about a physical quantity like length, I should say, for example, 5 meters. So when I say a pure number, I mean an, a mathematical number without any dimensions. So here... <coughs> Uh, so this is not a pure number because it has some units attached to it here, degrees. But this 30 is a pure number, 
okay and one degree again it contains the degree sign so this is 30 times larger than one degree and everything that you see appearing here are pure numbers we will talk about that a little bit later but this 30 and 180 can be simplified so it becomes 6 in the denominator so this becomes pi over 6 pi over 6 radians so 30 degrees is the same angle as pi over 6 radians yes but if i if i ask you can you tell can you give me an approximate value of this angle in radians so what you are supposed to do you have to replace pi with 3.14 and then divided by 6 it gives you a number that is an approximate value of 30 degrees in radians but this is the exact value okay so, for example, can you tell me what can I do with, uh, I don't know, for example, 45 degrees. So, if I want to do this, I will do the same thing. So, I can say that, okay, 45 degrees is equal to 45 multiplied by 1 degree. So, this becomes 45 multiplied by pi over 180 radians. And of course, I will simplify because 45 and this, if I divide by this, it becomes 1 and it becomes 4 times. So it becomes pi over 4 radians. By the way, this rule of thumb is better and faster. Yes, because 180 degrees is half of the circle. You should have it in mind. 180 degrees is pi radian. So when I ask you about 30 degrees, it is 1 sixth of the half of the circle so it becomes pi over 6 so you really don't need to do the calculations and if I ask you what is 45 degrees so if I divide this by 2 it becomes 90 if I divide it by 2 once one more time it becomes 45 degrees so I divide pi to 2 it becomes 90 another division by 2 pi over 4 so that's clear uh, so, by the way, let me make it a little bit tricky. So, can I ask you about, for example, do you think this also makes sense, pi degrees? Mm. Huh? If I ask you, turn pi degrees into radians. So, what should I do? So, this pi degree means what? What is the meaning of this? It means that 3.1415 something multiplied by that one degree it becomes a bigger angle a little bit larger than three times yes so this becomes pi which is the pure number pi multiplied by one degree and then what happens this becomes pi multiplied by pi over 180 radians and what will be the answer then this pi that pi pi squared it's pi squared divided by 180 radians Yes, so that is possible. Uh, of course, I can ask you the other way around question. For example, let me also give you one question. Convert, because these are very simple. Uh, convert uh, to degrees. Okay. So number one, for example, I would say 5 pi over 12 radians. I want to understand how much is this in degrees. The rule of thumb is easier, but let me just do it in proper way, and then I will tell you this rule of thumb is much easier to work with. This is why sometimes this is sometimes people say pi is 180. Don't get confused. Yes. If you replace pi with 180, you will get the correct answer for the correct number for the degree, equi degree equivalent of that angle in radians. Okay, so if I want to solve that one, what should I write? I would say that when you say 5 pi over 12 radians, it means this number, whatever it is, multiplied by one radian yes that's the meaning but one radian is on the board here is that number divided by pi so this becomes 5 pi 
over 12 instead of 1 radian I write 180 degrees divided by pi and then I simplify this pi is a number 3.14 something that one is the same they cancel out and then you know that this this one I can divide by 12 yes so it becomes 15 15 times 12 is exactly 180 but don't write 15 because you have divided 180 degrees by 12 it doesn't become 15 it becomes 15 degrees yes and then what is left is 5 and then this is 15 degrees if you multiply 15 degrees by 5 it becomes 75 degrees But again, as a rule of thumb, it is much easier to take pi and put 180 there. Uh, 180 divided by 12 is 15 times 5 is 75 degrees. But understand what you are doing. Pi is not 180. Pi is 3.14. What you are doing, you are writing the degree equivalent of pi radians. Uh, okay. So, for example, I can talk about this. Number two, that's the last one here, number two. So, for example, I can talk about two uh, radians. Or let me write, yeah, three radians. Okay, three comma four radians. So this is not something that I can find exactly. We need to use the calculator. So I have 3.4 radians. I want to understand. So this is why I this is this I the reason that I brought this example because that rule of thumb will not work here. Because in this case, usually it is the case that in the radian units you see pi. But this is not a necessity. For example, that's also a sensible question. So this is why you have to know how to do it in proper way. So this is this rule of thumb is not working here. So what I do, I would say, three comma four radians means three comma four one times one radian. This is the meaning of this quantity. But then I know one radian is that number. So this becomes three comma four multiplied by one hundred eighty degrees divided by pi. Yes, if you want the exact value, so you can write three point three comma four times one hundred eighty divided pi pi, whatever this number is, degrees. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Swedish, you write comma. It's good because it is not confused with the dot. Here, I'm using dot as the product, uh, so I'm not very consistent in my notations. Okay, this is the exact value, but then usually if you work with decimal points, the exact values are not that important, so it's better to do some approximation. But in this approximation, you need to remember pi is again 3.14, so don't get confused. Pi is always that. So if I want to do it, so I will take the calculator. Uh, it is how much I have to multiply 180 by... 3 comma 4 whatever it is I divide it by pi and I use the pi button on the calculator so it is 194 comma 8 194 comma 8 approximately of course if I want to keep one decimal point but don't forget, you have to put degrees. So that is important for you. For example, if I ask you a trigonometry, uh, trigonometric question, if I ask you in which quadrant 3.4 radians lie, what do you say? Yes? It is in the third because it is above 180 degrees and uh, still below 270 degrees. So... But if I ask you where is 3 comma 4 degrees, it's so small, it is uh, still in the first quadrant. So be careful, 3.4 degrees is completely different from 3.4 uh, radians. So is that clear? 
Yes? Okay. Now, let us as actually go a little bit further. There are two formulas in this part of the book. You will see them in the formula sheet as well. So one thing is, I want you to understand how I can derive them. So I give you a circle. L for the time being, let us work in degrees for the time being. So I give you the length of the radius, for example, r. I say it's 5 centimeters, for example. And then what I do, I will actually uh, give you a central angle, theta degrees, okay? And then this theta degree angle will subtend an arc from the circle, this arc. Yes? My question is that what is the arc what is the length of this arc subtended by this angle theta degrees? Okay, what do I mean by that? It means that if I have a piece of a string and I bend it so that it is exactly overlapping with that part and then cut it, stretch it, and then measure the length, I will get a number. That number I want you to answer. So how can I find the arc length? So if you don't mind, let me write A and B. I think in Swedish, for some Swedish word, they call it B, but let me call it L for the length. <coughs> and then this arc, I show it with A, B, and I put an arc sign on top. So we want to answer this. So my question is that I give you the number for R, I give you the number for this angle, and I want you to calculate the length of this arc for me. Okay? By the length, be careful, I do not mean this distance. No, I mean this distance is shorter than this arc length. I am considering the arc length. Okay, so how should I calculate this? Yes, Roko? This is not radian. Let us not get confused. It is this is one degree, yes. Theta degrees. Then should we, we should divide by 360 Yeah, exactly. So what is Rocco is saying is that if I ask you the same question, but this time, do you agree? If I give you 90 degrees instead of theta degrees, and I ask you the same question, what is this arc length? How do you calculate that? You would say that I will calculate the circumference of the whole circle, but because this is 90, it is a quarter of the whole circle, so I divide it by 4. Is that right? So if I, give you th if I give you 60 degrees, what do you do? If I give you 60 degrees, and this is the arc length, so what do you do? You again find the whole circle, but this time divide by... Hello? Six, because six degrees is one sixth of the whole circle. But now I haven't given you a, I haven't given you a particular number, but the idea is the same. So you need to know what is the ratio of this angle to the whole circle. So you need to divide theta degrees, whatever it is. Uh, so this is this is a little bit. I want you to understand that here I have to take this degree away. Yes, because I want the number divided by 360. Or, if you write degree there, you should also put the degree here. Because you want to find the ratio. So they should be of the same dimensions. So the ratio is a pure number at the end without any dimensions. Understandable? So if you write the ratio is theta degrees divided by 360, then it means that the answer is in degrees, which is nonsense. Yes, you want to find the ratio. So I wouldn't recommend this, so I will take this away. So it means that I take just a number without the degree sign, and then divide it by 360, it becomes the ratio, and then I multiply this ratio by the total length of the full circle, which we learned it is 2 pi r. So that is your question mark. So the arc length is this following this formula. But of course I can simplify this a little bit. For example, I can simplify this 2 with this one 
and it becomes 180 and if you don't mind I will put pi here so the answer so let me just write it down here for you so this becomes what pi this is this pi and then I multiply I divide it by 180 yes and then I multiply it by r theta Technically, if you put this degree sign here, that would be wrong. Yes? You are not allowed to put the degree sign anymore here. Because this is length and this is degree. Assume that this is meters. If you put degree here, this the unit becomes meter degrees. Which is nonsense because you are calculating a length. The length should be in meters. So this should be a pure number, a pure number, but this is just a length. So that's the formula if you decide to work with degrees, yes? But let us solve the same problem, but this time let me just choose radians, okay? So let us see what happens. I want you to repeat it again to understand. This is a little bit confusing, be careful by the way, yes? I am ex I I'm not exaggerating it when I'm discussing this because sometimes it is uh, confusing sometimes even for myself. Okay, so here you have this and then I have the same story but here this is R this is also R and then this one in this I would call it theta theta radians and I want to ask you the same question I want to find uh, the arc length again but in r theta is expressed in radians okay can you tell me what to do this time here do you remember I wanted to find the correct ratio so I took the number of the angle and then divided by 360 because I know that the full circle is 360 degrees so here what should I do I have theta in radians I want to find the ratio again so I have to take this number theta but divide it by yes uh, two pi. yes that's 2 pi because the full circle is 2 pi and then you multiply it by what the full circle so 2 pi r but this is very interesting because whatever this is is totally cancelled with that one and I get a very nice simple compact formula R times theta and the difference is just this factor so if you that's the reason if you st you will see in the next lesson in the next chapter as well so if you decide to work with radians then this factor always is hanging on you so it's always with you but if you decide to work in radians, that factor is gone, and then you are working with a simpler factor. So it is not impossible. You decide. If you want, you decide to have this factor all the time in your head, and then work in degrees, okay? So that's one reason, of course. So then I would say that, okay, the same formula is R theta. It's extremely important formula, okay? And you will use it in physics probably this year when you are uh, studying rotational motion. Okay, so this is uh, the formula, and then we learn that here. Okay, let me ask you another question. Oh, by the way, let us understand this. Radians is an artificial, actually, unit. What do I mean by that? So, for example, this L is measured... For example, let us take meters as the unit of length. Then L is measured in length. R is the radius that is also measured in length. And I told you that theta is in radians. So from here, what you can see, theta is equal to L divided by R. Okay? What is the meaning of this? You have one quantity in meters you divide this that quantity in an to another quantity by another quantity again in meters so you get a number is that a number a dimensionless number or a number with some kind of dimensions it's dimensionless because you are dividing two lengths yes so if this is 10 centimeters I don't know this is 200 centimeters if you divide 200 centimeters by 10 centimeters you get 20 that's it 
without any units, yes? So that's a pure number. That's the same story here. But on the other hand, I told you that theta is measured in radians. So that's why I would say radians are artificial, actually, units. So that they are still pure numbers. Yes, so that's important to understand. So because you see that theta was expressed in radians, on the other hand, theta is expressed as a dimensionless quantity. So if when you say one radian, I imp I'm, I'm trying to transfer this idea, what do I mean by one radian, but there is not that difference between one and one radian. Yes? They're just pure numbers. Okay, so that's one thing that I wanted to mention. I want to talk another thing today, is and that is to find the area of a sector. Sector means like this. If you have a circle, uh, let us make it a smaller than 90 in general. So assume that this is something, and then this highlighted part is called a sector of this big circle. So let me call this one R, let me call this one R, and if you don't mind, let me call this again theta degrees. But this time I will be interested in calculating the area of this sector. So how can I calculate the area? Do you understand how should I do that? The area of the sector is what? Exactly as before, I need to divide this by 360 degrees. So this becomes theta divided by 360. And then I multiply it by the total area of the circle. Yes? So the total area of the circle, if you remember, is pi r squared. And I cannot simplify this more than that. So this is the formula if theta is expressed in degrees. So let me, by the way, emphasize here theta in radians. Yes, it's good to emphasize here because in the future you might have forgotten that. So here theta in degrees. So it's better to have them in front here. And then we also had something more. Yes, theta in radians, theta in degrees. So here theta in degrees. And if I ask you the same question about the area, but if I give you in radians, okay? So I, if I give you theta is radian, okay? So what happens? This becomes th theta divided by the full circle in radians, which is 2 pi, and then I multiply it by the area of the total circle. But then again, it's a little bit simpler because this pi is gone, and then what you get is 1 over 2 r squared theta. So let me just write it down. So area is equal to 1 over 2 r squared theta and theta in degrees. Yes? So that's also good to know. And again, you see that it is uh, still simpler. If you uh, choose to work with degrees, you have to use this formula. But if you choose to work in radians, then you have to use a little bit simpler version of that formula, yes? Okay, so let me give you an example, because that's an important example in one respect. So let me mention it. So I give you this geometrical problem uh, f for finding an area. So here I have a circle, yes? And then what I do, for example, I take this sector. Let me give this a theta radian. Radians, yes? And what I do, I will take these two points and join them. And then this part of the circle, I don't know any name for it but my goal is to find this area okay if I give you theta if I give you the radius and of course this is the center so let me call it C 
so assume that I give you these numbers for example I say that the radius is 10 centimeters and I say that for example theta is pi over 6 radians or whatever my question is that how can I find a formula for the area of this uh, colored region so what should I do I think it's not hard immediately comes to mind what to do what should I do what's the strategy here yes it's not equilateral it's an isosceles because there is no guarantee that the third one of course my picture might not be good but there is no guarantee that this length is equal to this but this is already guaranteed that these two are the same because they are radii of the circle yeah the idea is correct but how can I find the area of the triangle that you mentioned because the data that I provide for you are th R and theta so you need to remember about what we learned in math 3c and that under the title of the area rule yes do you remember what was the area rule it tells you that if you have any triangle if you want to find its area of course you can use one half of the base multiplied by the height it's always the case but we also learn in math 3c you can do it a different way so you can say that this is a this is c this is b if I want to find the area I can take these two sides multiply the length by each other and then multiply it by the sine of the angle which is contained by these two sides a and then divided by two so do you remember that was the area rule so you multiply two sides and then multiply it by the sine of the angle between the sides and then multiply it by one half or for example if you want to do you remember I can take C and A so I can multiply C and A and then I will take this angle sine B and then multiply it by one half you can write the other one around so that is the best way to do it here as well so this the question mark here that I want to calculate the area of this colored region as you told me is the area of the total sector which we just learned and I use the bottom line because I'm supposed to work in radians so that's simpler version so this becomes 1 over 2 r squared times theta and then minus the area of this triangle and I will use this because the sides are given and the angle between them is also given so that is the better way to do it so this becomes one half I multiply the sides so R times R and then I multiply it by the sine of this angle So that is my formula but let me make it a little bit beautiful so it becomes 1 over 2 r squared and then I have theta r times r is also r squared but I have sine theta yes and I take 1 over 2 r squared out then I will have theta minus sine theta okay and this is my question mark and if you don't mind let me just call it the area yes this is the area of that colored region this is a good example because I really want to talk a little bit about this combination okay for example the first thing that I want you to learn is how to use your calculator so from now on if you have a calculator or if you're using GeoGebra you have to make sure that you are in the correct mode you either have the degree mode or you have the radian mode and if you have a calculator I think for the degree mode you will have a small letter D on the display and if you have in the ra if you're in the radian mode you have a small letter R okay so here for example I give you the formula I give you these numbers I want you to calculate the area for me so I give you that R is 5 centimeters and I tell you that theta is pi over 6 radians okay and I ask you to calculate area to two decimal points 
This is extremely important, okay? Calculate A to two decimal points. Okay, so what we are supposed to do. Okay, just do it for me so that I erase the board and then come back. Yes, I I don't have any clue, but you just. I, if I did it correct, uh, six point four three. So so your final six point four. four three, but what is the u what is the what are the units? This is supposed to be an area, and then uh, the radius, which is the length, is given in centimeters. So this becomes centimeters squared. Okay, but I really want you to do this with your calculator because that's the whole point. I want to see how many of you get the correct answer. Make sure that you have already switched your calculator to the radian mode. If you don't know, you can ask your friend or whatever because this is something that you need to know. It's also good to see how GeoGebra will react here. So you want to correct that. So you were in degree mode. So it's extremely important. So what you got your, your stuff? 0 0.294. 294. So let me just keep to decimal point 94. That's it. Yes? Centimeters squared. So that is the Gustav's, uh, Gustav's answer. Okay, good. No, uh, the point is I want you to everyone calculate this once at least to understand what is going on. Okay, something that I want to mention is that uh, you might get some kind of questions like this in the part of the exam which is n you are not allowed to use the calculator and you are only supposed to use the table. And then, unfortunately, I think in the table, I will, by the way, upload the formula sheet for you so that you can understand what's going on. But uh, I think the radian mode is missing there. So you need to understand to convert these things easily. For example, when I say pi over 6, immediately you should understand how many degrees is that. The rule of thumb, I told you it will work here. Instead of pi radians, you put 180 degrees. And then divide by 6, it is 30 degrees. Yes, so that's 30 degrees. Uh, okay, so uh, let us just go to this GeoGebra to see how it works. So first I think I will go again to CASView to make sure that everything is fine. Uh, so let me get rid of this, I don't need it. But let me just, f just for the testing, sign, I just put pi over 6 here, yes. Uh, and then if I want to use pi, I use this pi here and then divide it by 6. If I am right, it should turn out... Th what? Uh, why is that? Ah, okay. Uh, so this, I don't know, people change this. So just let me... No, but... Okay, so... I just put sine pi over 6 and I got 1 over 2 from GeoGebra, which is correct because pi over 6 is how many degrees? Is 30 degrees and I have it in my memory that sine of 30 degrees is indeed 1 half. Okay? Uh, okay. So that is it. But now if we want to calculate that number, so what should I do? I put 1 over 2 here because of the formula and then you have r squared. I told you that r is supposed to be what? is supposed to be 5, so it becomes 5 to power 2. 
and then I go down and then I multiply it by what? Multiply it by a pair of brackets, sorry, multiply it by a pair of brackets here and then what do I have inside the pair of brackets? My theta and I have to express it as pi over 6, this is not an option. For the case of sine, it doesn't matter if I write sine of 30 degrees or sine of pi over 6, I will get the same number one half back. Uh, but here, when you write theta minus sine pi theta, so you have to respect that and write pi over 6. So again, I would write pi over 6, and then let me just write minus sine of pi over 6 again. So this is the way that we put it there, and everything is okay. So this is the exact value. This is the exact value that GeoGebra provides for me. But if I ask you to do the approximation, you have to replace pi with just its ordinary number, 3.14 or whatever. And I think GeoGebra approximating is this one. So this is the number. So that's correct. So it's 0 0.29 approximately cube, uh, square centimeters. Is that clear? So this is how it works, but you have to work, if you want to use your calculator, you have to be careful. Okay, so now let me go back. Uh, let me talk a little bit here. So theta minus sine theta. Let me write this theta degrees minus sine theta degrees okay so here it's expressed in radians and by the way if it is expressed in radians I do not need to mention it it is in radians but if I mean in degrees I have to respect and put this small circle on top now let me ask you the question this is meaningful is this also meaningful or meaningless why? Because one is in degrees and one is uh, length. Not, not length. What is the dimension of sine? Sine is a pure number at the end. Yes? So that's exactly. This is meaningless. Be careful about this point. If you see something like this, you need to understand this is wrong. Okay? So because theta is expressed in degrees, this I don't have any problem. Is it meaningful this one? Yes, because sine of theta degrees at the end becomes a pure number without any dimensions, but theta is expressed in degrees. You are subtracting a pure number for a number which contains a degree. So this is meaningless. Okay? Uh, but what does it mean? Does it mean that I cannot do the calculations? Assume that you didn't know about radians and you wanted to calculate this area in degrees. Definitely we should be able to calculate it in degrees as well, yes? So can you tell me what will happen if I calculate in degrees? So if you don't mind, let us do the calculation in degrees. So here, assume that this is not radians, this is theta degrees. And then the question mark becomes the area of the sector in degrees, which we have it is still on the board. So this becomes what? Theta over 360 and then pi r squared minus the area of the triangle, which is not affected, of course, sine theta degrees. Okay, but be careful. This is not the theta in degrees. This is the number divided by 360. So what can I do? I can take 1 over 2 r squared out. So what is left is pi theta divided by 180. And then I will take minus sine theta in degrees. You see, if you write the correct calculation, the sine of degree does not appear here. It appears only here. This is meaningless. I, this is meaningful now again because that's a number. The output of this is also a number, and then I allow to uh, subtract two pure numbers. Okay, and assume that I want to do the same calculation here. So what should I write here? Can you tell me? 
So I would write 1 over 2, 5 to the power of 2, because r is 5 centimeters yet, uh, still. So what should I write here? Minus sine of 30 degrees. But what should I write here? Pi divided by 180 and times theta. What should I put for theta here? What? What should I put? I have I told you that theta is this number. This number in degrees what is 30 degrees. So what should I put here? 30. 30. Yes, but let us see what is going on. But 30 over 180 is just again pi over 6. So don't get confused. So this is because 1 over 2 times 5 squared, pi over 6, but minus sine 30 degrees. Yes, so this is the correct way of writing it if you insist to work in degrees. So be careful. This part is exactly as before that we put in GeoGebra. This part is not affected even if you work in uh, degrees. This part is affected, of course, apparently, but the final answer is again the same. If I ask you what is the value of sine 30 degrees, you will, same, you will get the same one half again. So I want you to understand you and don't get confused if you are working in radians or something like that. Is that clear? The last part of the lesson today is I want to rewrite whatever we got for trigonometric equations. We wrote everything in terms of uh, degrees. I want to write them in form of uh, radians and solve one your problem to see how it goes. Okay, so and then of course this is not something that uh, I want to teach. I just want to copy and paste my formulas in and express them in radians this time. Okay. Okay, so uh, do you remember we had this formula? So let me just translate one of them. So do you remember if we had, s if we have sine of a box is equal to k, and I ask you what is inside this box, you remember we had two scenarios going on. Either the box is equal to what? Sine inverse of that k plus n times 360 degrees, or, do you remember what was it? Theta was 180 minus sine inverse of k plus m times 360 degrees. m and n are actually integers. Another important thing is that I want to switch, I want to rewrite the formula if I am supposed to work in radians. And I think you can do it for me, yes? So what I do, I would, s I would write sine of the box is equal to k. If I am supposed to work in radians, I have to switch the calculator to the radian mode because this will also affect this number, yes? Because you are supposed to get, to get this number back in radians. Do you remember when I wrote sine inverse of th 1, you, ans you could answer 90 degrees because sine of 90 degrees is 1. Now you can also answer pi over 2, which is quite different a number from this one. What this number approximately is, is 3.14 divided by 2. So this is why the calculator will provide different, quite different answers, even for sine inverse, if you are working in degrees or in radians. So you have to switch back. And then let me just write this part. The first part, I will write the same, but this is not the same number as before. Be careful. The number provided here is now expressed in radians, which is completely different as a number from the previous case. So you, don't f you don't see it here, but these numbers are different in degrees and in radians. But this part, what can I write about this part? This is just 2 pi. 
yes and instead of writing n times 2 pi people usually write 2 n pi this is more common okay and then the same story for the second scenario or what is the other one it's 180 in degrees but now I'm supposed to work in radians so I replace it with pi and then minus sine inverse of k and then plus 2 m pi so you see that you need to understand these formulas yourself yeah you need none of them is in the formula sheet so you need to know how to work with them so again m and n are in z so let me just write down the other formulas quickly i just write the radiant version but it's good to see that you can write it yourself so can you help me to write this in radian mode so what was that do you remember the box was for the case of cosine we had plus or minus and then we had cosine inverse of k but then plus n times 360 degrees in the radian mode it becomes 2 n pi yes and then n belongs to z and for the case of tangent a uh, tangent of theta so sorry tangent of a box is equal to k then what can i conclude the box is equal tangent inverse of k but plus a multiple of 180 so this becomes just simply n pi and n belongs to z anyway so you need to know or you should be able to find these formulas quickly none of them will be given to you so that is the same story this uh, solving equations but in uh, radian mode i will take one of the examples in the book and solve it and then i will answer what alina asked from the pdf file and then try to solve that's also a good question from that american uh, teacher actually so let me solve one problem from the text of the book so the solution is also in the book itself Uh, so let me find the so I think I remember it so I think this is the question you are supposed to solve this in e equation cosine of 2x minus pi over 4 is equal to 0 comma 5 let me emphasize again do not make me mad in the exam asking question in which unit I have to solve the problem if I mean it is in degrees I have to put this simple s small circle on top otherwise it is by default in radian yes so, uh, so this means that when you don't see degrees somewhere so this means that that is in radians okay and then if you want to solve that you know this is the formula that you are supposed to use and then because it is in radian I have to use this version so this becomes this will play the role of the box and then the box 2x minus pi over 4 becomes equal to plus or minus cosine 0 comma 5 and then plus 2n pi okay uh, assume that this is in that part of the exam in which the calculator is not allowed you need to know that 0 0.5 or one half is a famous number so what you do you have the table in front of you you go and find one half in front of cosine and then you see the angle is 60 degrees and the radians are not written there so just by the table you realize this is 60 degrees but you're not allowed to write 60 degrees because you are supposed to work in radians so immediately you should change 60 degrees into radians in your head what is that pi was equivalent to 180 so you want to have 60 degrees so you divide by you divide by 160 180 60 you divide by 3 yes so it becomes pi over 3 
so then you realize that this is nothing except pi over 3 plus or minus pi over 3 it is by the way mandatory to write it like this uh, if it was 0 0.6 for example that is not a famous angle then be careful if you forget to switch to degree mode you will get an answer and you will probably not recognize that is wrong you have to switch to radian before calculating this okay so this becomes plus or minus pi over 3 and then I will get plus 2 n pi so 2 x minus pi over 4 but what I am supposed to calculate I am looking for x so I move the other thing there to the right so 2x becomes pi over 4 plus or minus pi over 3 plus 2n pi but I am looking for x so I divide by 2 it becomes pi over 8 either plus or minus pi over 6 because I am dividing everything by 2 and even this one it becomes n pi and if you stop here it's correct but it is not complete because you have to do this part and simplify it and there are two things that I can do either let us just go to a scratch paper pi over 8 plus pi over 6 so the common denominator is 24 24 to this 3 times so it becomes 3 pi 24 to this 4 times it becomes 4 pi so what happens it becomes 7 pi over 24 y one more time I have to do the calculation for the subtraction yes so again the common denominator is 24 this time it becomes 3 pi minus 4 pi which becomes minus pi over 24 so this means that I have two scenarios which you have to write x is equal with the positive sign I got 7 pi over 24 plus n times pi or x is equal to minus pi over 4 plus n oh sorry minus pi over 24 plus n pi so n belongs to z so this is the final answer that you have to provide for this question in the radian mode okay now can I have the question G can, can I have your notebook so let me clean the board Yeah, you can read it for me. Two so two. We the, the question is solve the following equation. Two. two x yes. Okay. So in this problem, if I write this in the exam, I told you that. In this equation, I can ask you to solve it in degree or in radian. So for this case, I will be explicit and I will tell you, okay? Don't ask me. I'm very sensitive to this, okay? <laughs> because I know that you will get a lot of questions in which unit I should solve the problem, yes? Okay, but this is a tricky question. So I told you that this is a difference. This is an equation. Let us, because the answer, as Alina told, the author has written the answer in the radian mode. So let us just also do the same thing. Yes, we write, we solve it in radians. Uh, okay, this is a tricky question. Do you have any idea how to solve this trigonometric equation? Because th the point is to reduce this somehow to one of those three standard forms. Yes, Rocco. So that's one idea, yes. I, uh, I think that you could uh, compress uh, two cosine x sine x to uh, two uh, sine two x. No. Compress these two how? These two. These two. 
These two. No. These two. No. So there's <laughs> there are three twos here. <laughs> these two. These two. These two. Yes. How should I combine them? Ah, you mean that put them in pair brackets? No, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, the idea is to factorize this. It's a little bit tricky to how to understand how to factorize this. It's not that hard to realize that two cosine x is in common here. But you need to be a little bit experienced. You might say that because in at the moment it is not clear why factorizing two cosines from only these two term terms will work. Yes, but let us be patient. So what I do, I factor two cosine x from these two term two, tr uh, two terms. This becomes what? One. I pulled it out. I divide this by two cosine. I get one. What is left from this term for me? plus sine. Yes? And now, I also move 1 to the left. So this becomes minus 1 minus sine x. What is left on the other side for me is just simply 0. Okay, I want to wait for you. Now, can you see why this is working? The factorization is not complete yet, but I can proceed to factorize more. Yes, do you agree? <coughs> Between these two, I can factor a minus sign out. Yes, so this, this becomes 2 cosine x, 1 plus sine x, and then from here, I, make a, I pull a minus sign out. It becomes a positive 1 plus positive sine x, and then I will have 0. But now it becomes clear that this factor, which is common, emerges, yes? So I can pull this out again once more. So then it becomes 1 plus sine x. I pull it out. Only 2 cosine x is left. And then I have a minus sign here. And then I have 1 left because I just divide that. And it is 0. And now I would say this is successful because that is the product of two numbers but it is supposed to be zero. So the zero product rule tells you that either the first factor is zero or the second factor is zero. So this means that, can you just summarize that? This means that either sine x is equal to what? Minus one. Or cosine x is equal to what? I move one to the other side and then divide by two. Agree? So I was able, this is a successful solution, why? Because I was able to reduce that on non-standard equation into two standard ones, yes? In principle, you should know these, how to solve them. So let us just do that to practice a little bit more in degree, in radian mode, yes? Okay, so what should I do? Sine x equals to... So just tell me because I want you to because you need to memorize that at the end. So what is the what are the answers? There are two possible answers. Yes, either x is what sine inverse of minus one plus two n pi because I am supposed to work in radians. But hopefully you can answer this question for me. What is sine inverse of minus one? Now ninety is one. Yes? So you can say 270 or you can say minus 90. But by con by, but, uh, by convention, you have to say minus 90. But 90 is not acceptable. 90 is a correct answer, but you have to convert it into radians because you're supposed to work in radians. So what you write is just minus pi over 2, and then you will have plus 2n pi. So one solution is this, x is equal to minus pi over 2 plus 2n pi, and then n belongs to z. So that's one solution. One, not, not one solution, one group of solutions. But there is another scenario going on. One possibility is this, the other possibility is, is 180 minus this one, but I am working in radian mode, so I would write pi minus what? sine inverse of minus 1 plus 2m pi, for example, 
but then I know that that's the same number. So this number is again minus pi over 2, minus minus becomes positive, and pi plus pi, pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. So the whole combination becomes 3 pi over 2 by common denominator. So these this simplifications you have to do. So then it becomes x is equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 2m pi. Yes, uh, m belongs to z. But hopefully you realize this is not necessary at all. Why? If you write that is not wrong, but you are writing, you are emphasizing on something for no reason, because the final point for minus pi over two is here. Yes. And 3 pi over 2 is also there. So it doesn't matter in which way you address it, yes? It's the same thing. So not necessary. It was not clear it is not necessary from the beginning. So I have to solve. Not necessary, yes? Yes. And now there is another scenario going on, and this is this one. So I would say now I will solve this one. Cosine x is equal to 1 half. Then what can I conclude here? That x is equal to plus or minus cosine inverse of 1 half plus 2. If, if you want, I can write 2 p, p pi or whatever, or k pi. Let me just change the letter. k pi. Even you don't need to be very pedantic here so you can use the same letter. But this is again the same story. If one half is a famous angle, cosine inverse of one half, you will see it is 60 degrees. You are not allowed to write 60 degrees because you are working in radians, so you write just pi over three. So then the answer becomes x is equal to plus or minus pi over three plus two k pi. So that is the final answer. So you really don't need to write this. So you have indeed three groups of solutions. Pardon? Yes, k belongs to z. That's also important. So k belongs to a z. Okay, so what I need to check, let us see if GeoGebra is also capable of solving this for us. So I go to GeoGebra view, and then I will probably use solve, because usually it is very good to see uh, what should I do. Solve equation in x, and then I have to type it. And I remember that we have to put this dot here. So solve 2 times cosine x, uh, cosine x, and then I have minus sine x, minus sine x, and then you go there plus 2 times cosine x, and then dot sine x and then on the right hand side you have one do you agree with what i have typed here two cosine minus sine it seems to be right yes so let us see if geogebra oh uh, i don't want to have the exact solution so I, I was a little bit careless so let me just uh, do that so this is the answer that geogebra provides are they my answers or not we have two pi a multiple of 2 pi minus pi over 2. Yes, that is the first answer. We have a multiple of pi plus pi over 3. Yes, that is one of the answers with the positive sign. And the other one is a multiple of pi minus pi over 3. So that's also correct. Yes, so the answers that you see here. So actually, GeoGebra is also really capable of doing these calculations. By the way, if I ask you to do the approximations, what do you do? Uh, what do you do for pi? 3.14 again. So be careful. So if I ask you to do approximations, I don't know if it works or not. So GeoGebra is actually taking. You see, if you multiply 3.14 by 2, it becomes 6.28. So Geo so remember every time pi as a pure number is 3.14 okay any questions okay thank you very much
Thanks. Yes? No, I, between these two, I factor 2 cosine x. And then I move 1 to the other side. It becomes negative. And then I put a minus sign and put pair of brackets around that. Then I take this from these two and take it out. And then this is left from here. Minus 1 is left from there. 